I'm curious, uh, you know, as someone who supported Donald Trump in the past, what your reaction has been to the way Trump has absorbed the DeSantis announcement. We have a clip here from Donald Trump that I'm going to play in just a second uh, that I think kind of uh, illustrates the, the general tenor and tone that Trump has taken so far. So let's play that and then get Dave's reaction. Rob De Sanctimonious and his poll numbers are dropping like a rock. I would almost be inclined to say these are record falls. The question, is Rob just young and experienced and naive, or more troubling, is he a fool who has no idea what the hell he's doing? How about the fact that he had the third most deaths of any state having to do with the China virus or COVID? Even Cuomo did better. He was number four. And look at Disney and what a mess it is. Could have worked out an easy settlement, but no, he wanted to show the fake news how tough a guy he is. Thoughts? I mean, everything he said there, pardon my French, was just a load of shit and we all know it. And it's like, what I'm sick of with Trump at this point, I don't know why this clip is like, even though I've seen it 20 times, it's particularly yeah. bothering me at the moment. I've had a lot of coffee. <laughs> um, is, is that we? he's a magician who we've seen all the tricks already and he keeps doing mm. the same tricks and we keep pretending as if we don't know what's going, oh, there is a card up his sleeve. I can't believe it. Yeah. First off, can, can either one of you, I've been trying to settle this on the show. Why is somehow calling someone Rob worse than calling them Rob? Let's do that one first. <laughs> Does it's, anyone, does that make sense I, to anybody? I think it's like he's robbing people. He's, he's, he's robbing a robber. His rightful okay, so, yeah. all right, yeah. fine. So he's robbing people. All right, that's one. And then now to sanctimonious, I mean, if Trump knew what the word sanctimonious yeah. was or sanctimony was, Trump is far more sanctimonious, yeah, uh, which is landing. sort of fake virtue than, than Ron DeSantis is. Uh, next thing, he fought this. Uh, we've already done the Disney thing, so you know my, my feelings yes. on that. Um, and oh. as far as the poll numbers, and, and the name calling and all that, you know, generally speaking, uh, when you're 30 points, as Trump likes to believe, he's 30 points ahead, he's 40 points ahead, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you don't relentlessly every day have you and every single one of your surrogates re lying repeatedly. De De DeSantis is a rhino and a globalist and he's Soros backed and Paul Ryan backed him up. Lying about absolutely everything if you were so co confident that you were in the lead the way that you purport to be. So I think there's a lot of things going on here. But Zach, to your point, I did support Trump last time. I am glad that I did it. I took a lot of heat for doing it. It was not easy to do in LA. Yeah. I believe it was absolutely the right thing to do. I think he was, for the most part, an extremely good president, but that doesn't mean he should be king and God emperor forever. There is a better choice right now. I think I've made my case fairly well here. And, and that should be obvious to most people. So I think the choice for people, if you're, if you're, going to vote Republican one way or another. You know, you're a libertarian. You've sort of had it with all these people, but you accept that, you know, it's not going to be Gary Johnson again or something. What you have to decide is for whatever your concerns are, let's say on the school choice thing that you brought up before, Nick, let's, let's just say even that you're more right on that than I am. Let's just pretend that's, that's just the case empirically. You have to decide, okay, if DeSantis has done all of these other things, and maybe I'm not completely with him on this, I should probably vote for him because, A, it'll stop the socialists and the communists and God knows what's coming behind Biden. But the other opportunity, and I think this is what I think when, when some libertarians are frustrated with me, I think this is what it hinges on. It seems obvious to me that for, for people like us who have mostly libertarian beliefs and you just want the government out of your life, we have a chance right now to take a guy like DeSantis and be in the libertarian wing of that movement. There's a $50 question. Oh, holy moly. Magnum Norse, uh, okay. big spender. We all yeah. wish on a star like Dave Smith, but we have to live in reality. If we make mm. Trump understand what we want, I believe he will do it. Okay, keep on believing. Yeah. But uh, I'll, I will say, you know- uh, Don't stop the, the, believing. The, the the Libertarian Party is obviously another X factor for us when we're yeah. deciding how we as libertarians are going to vote. Um, my understanding is, is Dave Smith has declared his, his candidacy. Uh, we'll see what else happens there. But, um, uh, you know, it's it's uh, I've become very cynical about uh, national level politics. So I'm, I guess, more open to Dave. Uh, Dave Rubin's argument than than I ever have been that we kind of just at some point just have to make a, a choice between really imperfect uh, offerings. Um, but 
I think it is incumbent on us to, even if we make that choice, you know, hold, try to hold people to the highest standard possible. I, you know, one of the things I'll say is, um, you know, the, every president going forward or almost in every election going forward, like politicians need every vote. Um, and I think part of the function of reason, uh, as well as the libertarian movement and the libertarian party, and these are all distinct things, obviously, is to extract as much, uh, you know, uh, concessions out of mainstream parties. So it may be, you know, that libertarians make up, you know, and, and we, Matt Welch and I have written about this and, you know, other people have tried to document it anywhere from about five to 15 percent of the of the voting population can be considered libertarian, uh, meaning, you know, they're generally for limited government, socially liberal, fiscally conservative, however you want to slice that up, um, is, you know, Donald Trump, the Republicans need to pay attention to libertarians because Donald Trump in two elections got 46 percent and change of the vote. He needs 50 percent. Any Republican needs 50 to, you know, more percent of the vote, they can get libertarians if they say we are going to limit the government, we're going to reduce overseas adventurism, we're going to cut spending, we're going to cut regulation, we're going to be more open to live and let live, all of these types of things. And, you know, the Democratic Party also needs us. And it's, you know, it's up to us to make as much noise to say, not that our votes are for sale, but like, if you get in line with a general uh, libertarian principle about more freedom uh, and allowing a live and let live world and creating the institutions and the policies that exemplify that, you know, we're going to give you a long run. That was an excerpt from Reason's live stream with Dave Rubin. If you want to watch the whole conversation, go here. And if you want to watch a different excerpt, go here and come back every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern when Zach Weismuller and I interview somebody that you definitely want to hear from.